Hello, I'm Joe Santana, chairman of the CDO Power Circle and the creator and host of ERG Power Talk. I'm here today with Brian Vigen, co-founder and CEO of Culture HQ, for an overview of the Culture HQ software platform. So now you should see uh, the, the profile that is within Culture HQ. So one thing that we can do is we can integrate with existing HR systems or grabbing sort of core employee data like name, department, location, et cetera. But for us, the really the, the difference and uniqueness of Culture HQ is to try to bring to life every individual's authentic self, what they care about, what they're passionate in, what they're skilled at, et cetera. It's such a critical aspect that, of course, all companies struggle with getting. Typically, this stuff happens offline, maybe in a private channel between a couple of friends, talking to the person that was seated next to you, and now, of course, completely virtual. It's really hard to get to know people. And most employee profiles that exist, as I'm sure we can resonate with, are very static, very business-centered, org chart-based, and can't really tell a story of who the person is. And when you have employees that share more about who they are, what they care about, it opens up people to connect in more deep and authentic ways. And there was recently, I was just on this podcast uh, the other day, where Jeff Weiner, the CEO from LinkedIn, he had talked about this, that unique human stories are one of the most underappreciated assets that we have hiding within workplaces today. If you can bring those out, that, that is going to provide so many opportunities to connect people. And I'll just share a quick little personal story uh, because the foundation of Culture HQ is as a result of this, where I've been able to experience the power of that firsthand. I ended up, I met my co-founder at my previous company back in 2012, just serendipitously through a ping pong tournament uh, where we were in two different departments. We never would have met if it wasn't for any sort of casual interaction over an affinity. And as a result of that, that was very early on in my journey, me meeting him over ping pong through this tournament. We then all of a sudden forged his friendship. I got to know more about what he was working on. I shared what I was working on. We formed this really strong, trustful relationship. And then all of a sudden you saw our ability to then help those two teams collaborate more efficiently and help my sales team to sell his product on the data team even better. So it just goes to show that one event, one relationship can truly change everything. And so this profile right here that you see it's designed not only to help employees to learn more about each other, but it's helping leaders like you have a more contextual view of people so you can build programming that can, build, uh, that can bring people closer together. And so I'll just quickly say that the unique system that we have enables to um, get people to share at least 10 times more about their interests and their skills than any other existing work tool. And then we then surface that of what do you have in common with each other? So a lot of those hidden commonalities that can bridge us together across our diversity uh, is then surfaced in Culture HQ. And then we then surface uh, some unique stories based off of those things that you've selected to create a more personal view of that person's profile. And so what you're able to see are people coming together across teams, across locations, and building real connections that help them feel like they belong and can learn from what others are working on and provide spaces for them to grow. So Brian, let me jump in real quick. So sure. A scenario in which you've discussed with me where this can help to uh, increase inclusivity, increase connection between people is, let's say you've got an ERG or a BRG and their profiles are in here. And so now they can see even more areas where they connect with each other, which is great. But in addition to that, say they have a speaker coming in who's, let's say, is the marketing executive or a communications executive. And prior to coming in, they also fill out a, pro a profile in order to familiarize uh, to make themselves more familiar to the people in the network before they arrive, but also so that they can get access to where they have cross connect points with different people in the network. That automatically creates a situation where when that speaker comes in, those people sitting there aren't just the ERG people who maybe they know some of them on site that they work in department A, B, or C, and the speaker is just this title of marketing you know, chief marketing officer, but they begin to get more of a depth of knowledge about, oh, I know that that person and I have, you know, the following thing in common. We both like hockey or something else or whatever that connection point is. And I think that's one of the things that we talked about that I thought 
That's where this becomes really important because it becomes the basis for continuing to invite new people in and at the same time, make them aware of who else is in there at a deeper level and make everybody who's in there more aware of who that person is at a deeper yes. level, right? So yeah. talk a, I don't know if you're going to talk a little bit about that, but if you, if you could just kind of touch on that a little bit and then I'm, you know, go on with the other material that yeah. you have. But I think that was an important point that you shared with me. Yeah, I think that actually plays well right into this, this, uh, this portion of the tool where it's about creating more intentional programming for people uh, and including their interests and stuff. And then having that contextual view of, of who people are then allows people, when you bring them in the same room together, they have more context within each other, like within the room that they can very quickly see who's at the event, who's at the program, of course, now virtual, who's on the zoom call or whichever technology you're using there. And then naturally for a speaker, because you have more context into who these people are, then you can then cater certain things and topics uh, within that program. And so for Culture HQ, um, I think what's interesting is clients are now coming to us because this whole like sugar high of fun Zoom calls and happy hours are now beginning to wear off. And they're trying to extend the buzz, if you will, and build real sustainable engage engagement and better relationships. And people just naturally don't feel included during just a Zoom happy hour when Maybe everyone has 10 seconds to contribute and a couple of voices dominate the conversation. And of course you have no insight into who's actually in this room. You really have to build events and programs with purpose and intention to actually include. And so with us all being remote and virtual now, it's even more important. We don't have the opportunity to look over next to us in the office and chat with the people near us. Um, so what makes culture HQ unique is that we allow you to build interest-based events and programs from the bottom up. So you can see here, this is a, a dashboard of all the different programs that could be happening either across employee resource groups. It can be designed just for one employee resource group. And you can find anything that's happening, whether it's uh, community related, lunch and learn training, meetings, team building, et cetera. All of that can be facilitated through Culture HQ. And we're gonna help from start to finish to make sure that you're creating a diverse set of programs including more people and helping to actually build connections through all of that. So the first step, if I just go over to the community spot is to really learn more about what different groups of people are interested in. So you can filter down in culture HQ to see any of the different groups. And so if we say, all right, let's take a look at the Boston office, for instance, you can then see the top interests within Boston, uh, within all of those groups and you can break it down even further if you want and then you can even see the individuals to see what their interests are what they're talented uh, what they're talented at you can see where they're based in the organization but then we also surface the commonalities that you have so as a program manager you can use this to then see what the top interests are and then build really intentional programs based off of that so within boston you can see woman on the move is the top interest so if we select that then we can create a group event for everyone that likes Woman of the Move. So when you come over here, this is how you can actually set up the event. And this is a unique flow that we've created that ensures that you're tagging very specific things that are gonna help you align the things you're doing to different outcomes and values of the organization. So you can see we have different categories and templates you can choose from. You can then tag organizational values. You can sponsor this uh, by, by the organization and you go through this flow of the event, which then will set up the event for you. And when you land on the event page, so after you create that, it'll then create this dynamic landing page where you can see the guest list, you can see the description, you can see all those tags, which are helping you to promote the event to different people and a live discussion that might be happening related to this event with photos and questions, et cetera. And so this event page is not only ha happening before the event of trying to get everybody involved and aware of what's happening in a centralized way, but it also helps the creators and the hosts to manage this from start to finish. So we have surveys that are automatically embedded so you can capture real time feedback after the program or event ends and you're going to capture really detailed data on that. And so the goal for us in this events and programs type tool is to help you expand your reach and get more people involved in events and programs. 
provide you a contextual view of who these people are. So you can see as you invite people and who's RSVPing, you can then click on any of these and see their profile and see what you have in common, what their interests are, et cetera. Uh, so that's designed to really help try to create a more inclusive experience for those events. And the last thing that I'll just show is the analytics dashboard that sort of pulls it all together. And so this is going to really help you give, get a deep understanding of who your people are, making sure that you're doing the right things to keep employees engaged, connected, and feel that deep sense of belonging. And so by having these types of insights, it could be the difference between an inclusive culture where people feel like they belong and are able to develop and build real relationships versus a culture where people feel siloed, feel excluded, don't feel like any of the programs that are happening are aligned to what they care about. Uh, so this could be a huge difference to include people. And so this dashboard right here is the macro view to see all the programs you've done, how many people have you engaged, what's the impact of those particular programs, and this is a proprietary score that we've created that's helping you to assess the level of reach of your programs, of how many different types of segments have you reached with your programs. And you can break that down by location, by department, et cetera. And so this dashboard is really going to be like your command center to see how are the things that you're doing? Are they resonating? What types of things are we doing? What's the rating? What's the sentiment? What's the feedback, et cetera, to really so give you a strong view. Yep. Ahead, so Brian, Brian, I'm going to jump in real quick. Uh, I got a question here. Uh, Kara talks about having similar types of tools and large knowledge management systems where individuals are tagged within procedural documentation. Uh, but her question is, can this tool that you're describing get baked into the company's existing databases? In some cases, yes. So it depends on the scenario, but we can integrate with a lot of different internal tools. I would say what we've seen so far from just existing research of like when companies have like Workday or they have this big corporate intranet, when they try to bake a lot of this stuff that exists into there perfectly, like try to put all of the Culture HQ technology events, profiles, all that within their SharePoint or their intranet, what we've seen is that it actually gets lost and people don't have that psychological safety, that safe space to be able to share and get really authentic. So Culture HQ decided to design something that was really intentionally um, comfortable for people to share and share their interests, share what they care about, what they're passionate in, and that helps to create that more authentic experience. But a lot of the stuff that we have, like when you create events, can be seamlessly integrated to, to calendar. They can be seamlessly integrated to email. So when you send out invites, it automatically goes on people's calendars and things like that. Yep. So the main tools that people are living in every single day, they're still seeing the Culture HQ messaging. But when they come into Culture HQ, it's then that intentional uh, space to connect with people. Got it. Okay, great. Thanks. And so that's basically it in a nutshell. I'm just going to stop there. Um, and there's a lot more features that I can, of course, share, but um, that's sort of the, the crux of it. So I would say just to summarize quickly, our fundamental belief based off, of course, many historical staters, stories and decades of research is that if you can create a culture, create a space where people authentically and empathetically connect with one another, you're going to help people be more committed to their job, their organization, et cetera. So everything that we're, we're doing and building and working on is in an effort to bring that to life. So, That's great. I, Thank you, Brian.